Hello my Sock Universe. I actually wanted to surprise you with a little jersey and then I got the had it ordered already and then I got the message. It's not in stock anymore. It was the current one. So yeah, I'm still on the lookout for a little jersey. Wearing Valencia because I really think given the title race in Spain, none of the four above deserve to be worn in, in this video. Does anyone want to become champions in uh, La Liga? It really doesn't seem so. Uh, weird. Somewhat exciting weekend in Spain. However, um, the story definitely has to go that seemingly no one really, really, really wants to become champions. That's the, although we had a big twist there at, 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 at the end uh, as well with VAR getting involved. It's anyone's guess who will get it. Uh, we'll talk about that, of course, a little bit later. Let me pull myself up a little bit. So, in France, though, uh, we already, it was only a race of two, and it might only be down to one. I think that PSG is probably out, and Lille uh, is squarely set on this title, which uh, is rather remarkable. We also had a, a few big results down on the bottom, so that's in, 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 in interesting and speaking at the cusp of, of a title, Sporting is, I think as far as I know, only a draw away to secure the first title in more than a decade, I think almost two decades, so uh, another big news there. I would say let's go right into it, we will start in La Liga. I said I'm wearing Valencia, uh, there is also a reason for that. Uh, you know, the early games didn't see much of uh, of this, it started all with Barcelona Atletico Madrid. This was one of those games where I said, yeah, I'm setting everything aside, I'm not even watching the Bundesliga, nothing. This is the game I need to watch. Um, and I have to say I was severely disappointed by how Barcelona was playing. Uh, I think especially towards the end of the first half, Atletico Madrid was by far the better team. Uh, not having huge chances, but having more chances, having more of, of the game, William well deserved to go with a lead into halftime. Uh, there's no uh, doubt in my mind about that. It was also a little bit marked by early in injuries. Lemar had to come out, Saul came on, and then uh, Sergio Busquets, weirdly enough, completely disheveled uh, Barcelona and uh, Ilaish had to come, come on. Um, all that say for all uh, how Atletico was the better, seemingly uh, more mature team uh, in that game, the biggest chance fell to Messi, which, which would have been one of those Messi goals where he goes past five, five players and just a great save by Oblak, uh, keeps the score level. In the second half, and it's always, Atletico Madrid always plays always late lately they have one great half especially in the first half they go a lot and then hanging back hanging back hanging back uh it was not so much hanging back and defending and draw this time but uh barcelona trying a little bit more they had a goal uh, uh correctly ruled out for offside um they had another chance i mean i think the biggest one came very late in the game when dembele uh point blank range uh heads it over if he can just press the ball it goes in but um Despite Barca being a little bit better in the, in, the, in the second half, I think both teams were afraid to lose. And I don't understand for Barca because uh, that draw, you knew that this, this would hand the advantage over to Real Madrid. And if you should lose against Atleti or draw, I think you're losing the head-to-head -head anyway. And if you get one point or zero points, doesn't make in my opinion, too much difference. And I actually thought that it was then um, Atleti who also uh, pushed a little bit more. I mean, Saul came off again. Uh, Joao Felice came, uh, came on. The egg, the egg actually made some, um, how, how, how to say, daring changes and were not pressing. But, you know, uh, they say, well, if we can get... Uh, the win at the come 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 now i we wouldn't mind doing that so overall i really have to have, have to say um i found barcelona's performance overly overall very disappointing again they cannot be the big team and they're now losing the head to head to both madrid teams in uh the league so what gives uh, this is not the barcelona that we're used to what speaks for barcelona is maybe a slightly easier schedule, however, uh, there are some relegation fodder in there as well that uh, might not be all that easy. Uh, speaking of relegation, Wesco losing to uh, Cadiz definitely did not help their uh, cause. 
also uh, about Abers win over Getafe was was a big one. And uh, Valencia via Valladolid uh, was a game where Valladolid actually controlled most of the four first half, but a bit against the run of play, uh, Waxi Gomez gets the one nil, and then right after the half gets the two nil. Uh, and they add a third one late on uh, through Korea, which sees Valencia relief from any, rele any relegation trouble. And what's even, even more, they are now uh, overtaking Levante. And again, Levante might not finish above Valencia. So uh, that's the reason why I chose Val Valencia, because uh, at, some times, at some points this season, you really thought that Valencia actually could go down. Not going to happen, and we're all happy for that. Um, although I wouldn't love to see Valladolid go down either for the simple reason that I think this is a team that just belongs in La Liga. Uh, Via Real Celta, that was a refereeing SHIT show. Uh, the first goal by Santi Mina should have been taken away because in the build-up, you, you can see how a Vico player is just pulling a uh, Real player so that he cannot um, uh, interfere with the build with, with the build play. That's a goal that should not have been uh, allowed, but it's allowed to stand. Um, Gomez can get uh, an, equ an equalizer. Then, uh, yeah, penalty. That probably was all, all right f uh, for Santi Mina. No, that was a contentious one. Uh, the second one to Mendes was all right. Then there was a red card given for a, a, a Vigo player, but didn't even touch uh, the, uh, the Villarreal player. So had that had to be walked back. Then uh, the uh, Mario Gaspar and Ruli all on the bench have been given red cards for complaining because all of the close calls have been going, going, going against Villarreal all the, all the way. Absolute disastrous uh, refereeing performance. And um, uh, Villarreal definitely needs to uh, felt a hard done by. 4-1 um, Solari, then the 57th, and then another penalty through Moreno, and another red card this time. Ye uh, ye yellow red for Celta, Celta Vigo, but it doesn't change all that much. It's a 4-2 win for Celta Vigo, which keeps them a little bit in uh, the race for European spots. Also, lots to be talked about Real Madrid Sevilla. In the 12th minute, Monsema scores a goal. And it is taken off uh, for an offset call that was marginal. But did anyone bother to tell the audience? You just saw up there, yeah, it's 0-0, zero, zero, it's not 1-0, and they play on. And then they show a quick VAR picture without, with no lines of us whatsoever. And then uh, it took you quite some time to really realize, yeah, that goal did not count. But uh, really bad from uh, the directors there. Um, however, it is Sevilla who largely controlled the game. Um, and surely, Lopetegui would have had a lot of fun of really getting Real Madrid out of this title race, uh, just for personal reasons, being fired so uh, quickly far from Real, uh, Real Madrid. And they take the lead. Uh, I think Papo Gomez free kick, uh, Rakitic plays it on to Fernando, who uh, lets uh, Casemiro slide by and pulls puts it one nil. And Sevilla, the better team in the first for the first half. However, uh, Zidane makes a, a really good exchange with putting on uh, Asensio for Luka Modric and also taking Marcelo out. That Marcelo is still playing is to me a disgrace. I think you should just take... It's, he's not a Real Madrid player any, 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 anymore. He's, he's a liability in every sense. And it is then, after um, Vinicius Jr. moves another big, big turn, it is then uh, Kroos who sees Asensio free and he puts the net. It's 1-1. One, one. And then the sequence of the game. It's a corner kick for Sevilla. Uh, that is somewhat somehow cleared and then a quick, uh, quick counter-attack where all the Sevilla players are pushing up. So Bonsema is just behind uh, in, in uh, the, his own half. Where when the ball is played, he can run free on goal. He's brought down in, in the box. Penalty Real Madrid. However, there's a little uh, wrinkle there in that sense that... Um, uh, from that corner, Eda Militao has a clear handball. The hand is outstretched, he doesn't see it, but it falls on his hand. And so it's a really tough decision to, to make. There is one penalty on Sevilla's side, one on Real Madrid side. Of course, you have to take the one that occurs first. So Sevilla gets the penal penalty. And, and you can see the Real Madrid players standing around VAR and putting a lot of pressure there. But the right decision was made. 
Rakitic steps up, makes it 2-1 Sevilla. However, Sevilla, I think they would have deserved the win. Could not hang on. Um, Azar come, comes on and I don't want to go into his, uh, you know, with uh, chatting to his friends and the whole uh, drama surrounding it. Honestly, I'm just... You're allowed to chat to friends. I, this is so stupid to me, but uh, let's say. He deflects a shot by Tony Cross to make it 2 2. And at first, you think, yeah, the two big games ended with a draw. We don't have any decision. But that goal actually could prove huge. Because that allows now Real Madrid to stay where they are. They stay ahead of Barcelona. And they also own the head to head of Atletico Madrid. So basically, all Real Madrid needs to do is stay ahead. Of Atletico and Atletico doesn't have a very easy game coming come, coming up. Yesterday, then uh, Betis beats Granada to put them into contention for uh, the Europa League. Uh, Borja Iglesias scoring, I think, both goals. Um, Magis uh, getting the equalizer. The winning goal came in the 80, 80, 87th from a back pass free kick in the own box with all the Granada players line, lining up on the goal. The goal that is first blocked by the Borja Iglesias just puts it under the bar and it goes in. And so with all this drama in La Liga, again, who wants to win the title at the moment? We are more or less at the same as we had before. And there was a decision, also that late goal put Sevilla out of contention. Um, that go if Sevilla would have won, they would have been right back in, in, into it. Not a big chance, but I think they would have been right uh, in, 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 into it, giving them 73 points. They would have had, had a small chance. But in this case, Barcelona has the easier schedule come, coming out, but Atletico Madrid has the points, two, two points ahead of the rest. So, still wide open. Real Madrid only giving a 40% chance uh, at the moment in, the, in my model. Uh, yeah, they have to play Bilbao away from home, which is not an easy game, but for some reason I'm thinking Real Madrid, to be honest. Also on the bottom, we saw Valencia is clear, Levante is clear, Valencia ahead of Levante. Um, and then on the bottom, Alaves looking kind of safe-ish. Real Madrid has a really, really tough schedule come, coming up with the last game played against Atletico Madrid. We'll see the uh, next two games uh, soon. But Huesca, Elche and Eibar, it is still very much up uh, who will go down. It's very, very tight and everyone has, has a chance to stay out. But everyone also has a big chance to uh, be relegated there. Um, as expected standings to resolve the relegation puzzle, at least what my model says, you see it's 33, 33, 33, 32. It's super tight. At the moment, it will be Elche Valladolid and Eibar. And I think for Valladolid, it's especially the tough schedule that they have. And on the top, Atletico Madrid, ahead of Barcelona, ahead of Real Madrid. Again, schedule speaking a little bit in favor of Barcelona, but I don't... might be deceivingly... Easy. I think uh, Betis will probably get into the sixth spot. Villarreal um, seventh will, will, will mean conference league, but you know. Who knows if Villarreal won't win the Europa League, in which case then Sevilla would go down. Uh, it's just crazy. Midweek round, already today. Levante Barcelona, a uh, big one for Bar Barcelona. Sevilla Valencia also. Uh, yeah, it's a big name game, but I don't think it will come from it. Atletico Madrid and Real Sociedad. That will be a difficult one for Atletico Madrid. And Real Madrid has to play at Granada. And as I said, Real Valladolid has a difficult game uh, at home to Villarreal uh, for going down. And if you look at, at the weekend, quickly Valladolid, Real Sociedad, Villarreal, Real Sociedad, Atletico Madrid. That's not an easy scare. Because that's why I think uh, Valladolid probably will go down. More importantly, at the moment, all the games are scheduled to be played Sunday um, early evening. This might change. This is at the moment the information that I have. Um, Real Madrid has to play at Bilbao, which could put them already a little bit in trouble. And Atletico Madrid also sooner Barcelona Celta. I think that is a, that's probably Barcelona's toughest game coming up. So. Um, with some luck, Atletico Madrid could be champions uh, by next week. I just don't see it. And then we have Villarreal, Sevilla again. Sevilla having two really nice games, but um, the positions are very much set. Lots of La Liga, and we still have we still have two leagues to go. Lille on the shoulders of Burak Yilmaz beat Loss. Uh, they get an early penalty. Deserved penalty that Yilmaz uh, converts, and then Loss is actually quite well in the game. 
However, uh, Michelin gets two ye ye yellow cards. The first one, honestly, debatable. The second one is, is one, but overall, he probably shouldn't have been sent send off. Um, and at that point, a squarely advantage Lil, and then uh, Burak Yilmaz with an amazing long range shot makes it 2 0, settles the game. And the, we all said that this is the big one, this is the toughest game that Lil has, uh, come, come, uh, has, has, has coming up. Jonathan David uh, makes it 3 0, big win for Lil. Not also with a really big win over Borbadovic, uh, puts them. A teeny bit out of trouble in Bordeaux uh, for some reason is also not um, still not quite safe but also a little bit out of trouble uh, thanks to other results ha ha happening. The goals uh, for not through Kou uh, Koulibaly, um, Lusa penalty and Kolo uh, giving it a 3-0 win. Leon also, and this is the, re the result that actually will put uh, Bordeaux a little bit at ease, 4-1 um, win against L Lorient. It, all came in the second half, but uh, then it came quick with Awa, uh, Paqueta, Bruno uh, scoring two. The nicest goal though, uh, through Montconduit uh, lay, lay down for Lorient, but uh, really not, not much. Lorient, uh, as we'll see, a little bit in trouble. Um, Nîmes getting a 3 0 at Metz, but it might be too little too late. Uh, Monaco uh, winning against Reims, uh, Reims away from home through Matazo. Also uh, puts them, uh, uh, you know, leaves them ahead of Lyon for this final Champions League uh, spot. And then the big one, Rennes against PSG. Ran very well in that game. PSG is still reeling from uh, being eliminated. And, you know, with all the drama, emotional drama come, coming on, they do get a penalty. That took a whole lot of time to get confirmed. Neymar steps up. I mean, uh, at, at first you think that, that should be a penalty, but then you see in the build-up, yeah, there's a clear foul. Um, was it? I I I don't know who it, who 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 it was. It doesn't it, it doesn't really matter. Um, but um, and then it was all about the, gets does he get hit before the ball hits him, and goes in in the other, and it it happened there that, that way. So it was a penalty. Neymar, uh, probably one of the safest penalty takers at the uh, moment makes it 1-0. However, PSG not convincing at all. And Girazi, who had already, I think, a goal disallowed or at least had a big chance, heads in the equalizer in the 70s and PSG cannot find a win. Uh, a win. And again, losing the heads with Kim Pembe with a horrible uh, challenge being sent off Ren, handing it really very much to um, uh, Lille, who are now three points clear at top of the table. Three points with two games to go and rather uh, manageable games, one has to say. Uh, so yeah, and PSG not looking all that good as well. Monaco and Lyon still could actually um, manage to catch PSG. PSG having only a minimal chance. Lyon but is uh, more or less out of the title race. On the bottom, we also have to look, it's still a uh, wide range, range field, but uh, Nîmes, as I said, the 3-0 came a little bit too late, not now in the rele relegation spot, but also trending upwards. So I'm a little bit, I think they might actually catch Lorient, um, which is exactly what the expected standings are saying. Um, that, yeah, they will all get to the 40 point mark, and Lorient will have to play a um, playoff, which actually rem uh, reminds me this 40 uh, point mark is always seen as the magic mark where you save. That should be something that I should look into. I think I have looked into, but I should make a video about that. On top, Lil very much in, in control and that even though I have sympathies for PSG I think Lille winning this title would do Ligue 1 very, very very well and they have been a really exciting team to watch I would be very excited if Lille pulls this one off and I know I'm really working on getting a little jersey and anyway I mean looking very much at many French jerseys at this moment I think my next few unpacking videos will mostly be French probably just, I, just, there are some, there are some simple league uh, jerseys that uh, I like at the moment a whole lot. Next round uh, is on the weekend, uh, where Lille has to play against Saint Etienne, where a win will put them at the doorstep. And then, if PSG doesn't win against Reims, which they probably, probably will, uh, it would mean the title. Um, 
Going down with Lorient against Metz, with Nantes at Dijon, that's an easy win. Uh, Nîmes against Lyon, it's, mich, it's probably mission impossible, especially with what Lyon has to play. The big name game will probably be Monaco against Rennes, but also not much, and as I said, Lille against Saint Etienne. Um, we also have the Cup quarterfinals, which could play something into how the teams will perform. Montpellier against PSG on Wednesday and Thursday, Rumilly Vallier against Monaco to set up a French Cup final, the last chance of a real title for PSG. But it's interesting, Poch comes in and PSG cannot really win titles. What's going on? What's going on? Moving on to Portugal, where Sporting gets another win against Rio Ave. Uh, Pedro Gonçalves and Paulinho scoring the two goals, uh, making it 2 2 nil, meaning I Sporting needed four points. And that was also a win, especially given that Benfica and Porto play on the draw. That's exactly what they did. I had the feeling from the highlights that Benfica was overall the slightly better team. Everton giving them, them the lead through Porto, Porto lay down, had, had a real push. Uribe gets the equal, as I think that... Um, they also had a big chance then at the very end to win it. But I, I, I think a draw was just, just Jordan was everything that Sporting needed uh, to be put on the doorstep of a title. Uh, if you look at the standings after this round, eight points, three games to go, and superior goal the, uh, difference. Uh, it all points towards Sporting. And Porto, with that draw, fended off Benfica probably sufficient enough to also be kind of safe going into the Champions League. Lots of changes mid-table, but on the bottom, Boavista, Farenj and Nacional are the ones that seemingly go, go down. Rio Af, who had just been in the Europa League, uh, now play Boavista, uh, have to battle Boavista for this um, last uh, relegation uh, title. Uh, re uh, the relegation spot, not, not title. I'm, the video is too long, I'm talking already nonsense. Uh, expect is saying it's all pretty clear up until six spot one will, will say also down Boavista, the French and Nacional at this moment. Uh, there have been games played since this round. I just didn't compute the, ta the table that I will do is because I probably will do um, on Friday or so a video on these leagues anyway. Uh, but we have Porto winning 5-1 so the lead is now cut down um, to 5 points. But all Sporting win needs today is a win against Boavista, which Boavista also needs the points, so might not be all that straightforward. And then on the weekend, we have the Lisbon Derby, and I think Sporting, while they might want to win with a win over Benfica, I think they wouldn't be unhappy to actually have already a title and maybe get a guard of honor from their big city rivals. That would be definitely special. Lots happening in, in these leagues. Again, uh, the two... Uh, best title races. I mean, the France one, since we are so close to, to the end of season, a little bit peeping out. We have only a three way race in Spain as well, but it's really exciting. Um, I personally think that the fact that uh, the in Spain, it is such a tight title race. It doesn't necessarily speak for the quality of the league, but it is exciting. And you won't trust any of these teams to go through. We also have two really good stories with Lille and Sporting winning potentially the, the, the titles, which I think is huge as well. Anyway, I want to know what you thought about what was happening in these leagues. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Very long video, but we needed to talk about all that. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you uh, enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day.